Integration by parts is the second integration technique that we want to introduce. Keep in mind that this is used whenever we want to integrate the product of two functions. So let's take a look at how this process would work and then a few examples of it in practice. So what we'll do is select part of our original problem to be equal to u. So that part will look like integration by substitution. But then we'll be selecting another part of our problem to be equal to dv. So a different variable here in this case. So we've got u and v. And we're going to make those selections, or make that selection for u, using a particular acronym, LIATE. So this acronym is most useful for math science students who are dealing with a wider range of functions. This is short for log functions, inverse trig functions, algebraic functions, trig functions, and exponentials. We don't deal with any trigonometry in this course. So what we'll be focusing on will be log functions, algebraic functions, and then exponential functions. So if there's a log function, that's our first choice for u. Then we move to algebraic functions, so power functions and things like that. And then exponential functions would be our last choice. So once we have u, we'll find du by taking du over dx, the derivative of that substitution statement. So again, that part's still looking like our integration by substitution process. Once we have dv identified, then we'll use that to calculate v by taking the integral of 1 times dv to generate v. So this is where this starts to deviate a little bit more from the integration by substitution process. So we'll select one substitution and differentiate both sides. Then we'll find another substitution statement and we'll be integrating both sides. Once we have those pieces, we'll rewrite our integration problem as uv minus the integral of v du. So we need to identify u and dv, and then from there we'll find du and v, which we can substitute into this formula. So in our first example, we want to start off by identifying u. We don't have a log function, so what we'll do is let u equal 3x, that algebra function, or that algebraic function, and we'll let dv equal e to the 2x. We'll take the derivative of both sides of our substitution statement for u to get du over dx is equal to 3, or du is equal to 3. And then what we'll do is integrate on the right hand side or integrate both sides of this dv statement and we're going to make use of a little shortcut we'll go ahead and introduce. Anytime we have to in integrate e to the ax dx this will always integrate as 1 over a e to the ax. So that'll just save us a few steps. Um, this will be a repeated integral that we might see pretty often um, rather than having to go through integration by substitution every time we can go ahead and jump to the conclusion that this will be 1 half e to the 2x. So now we can go ahead and set up our integration by part statement. So it would be u, 3x, times v, which would be 1 half e to the 2x, minus the integral of our statement for v, so 1 half e to the 2x, times du, which in this case would be 3dx. So we just plugged in those pieces for the formula we stated above based off these substitution statements we just set up. We could clean this up a little bit. This would be 3 halves x e to the 2x minus 3 halves times the integral of e to the 2x dx. And then we could integrate e to the 2x using this formula that we just established again.
So we would integrate e to the 2x as 1 over 2, or 1 half, e to the 2x plus some constant c. And then cleaning up this middle term, we can take 3 halves times 1 half to get 3 fourths e to the 2x plus some constant c.